nine or or what is it? Storm surge is up to like fucking uh what ten to twelve feet expect uh, expected is pretty crazy, pretty wild shit. Here's a look again. We do. I repeat that for me one more time. I'm going to pee. I'll be back in a second. Monica, I believe, yes, we do have landfall. They have just confirmed it. We have landfall as of right now. So the center of the storm has officially crossed into Florida as we speak as a Category 3 storm near Keaton Beach. So repeating, we do have official landfall near Keaton Beach, Florida, as a Category 3 storm. Again, these impacts are going to continue as this storm continues to slide off to the north and east. Those outer bands are going to continue to push very heavy rain, very gusty winds, and yes, uh, the potential for some tornadoes also exists across these areas as well. Back to you. Thank you, Ellison. That was a really great update because we now know that Hurricane Idalia has hit Florida, a direct hit near Keaton Beach, Florida. If you still have power and are still watching television, this is the time that you take shelter, that you get into an area that is as safe as possible inside. Uh, most places in Florida do not have basements because the water table is so high, uh, but get into a safe space at higher ground. Uh, try to stay out. Do not get in your cars. Do not try to leave now. This is not the time for it in a place like Keaton Beach where Hurricane Idalia category three storm, which means that the, the winds are sustained at like 120 miles per hour or more. Uh, please, please, please do not go out in this. Don't play around with this because there will be projectiles that will be whipping around that can really injure you and make like what we're doing currently. <laughs> like we're doing that because we're professionals. You know what I mean? Guys, guys, we're professionals. Chill. Feel me? We can do that. You probably shouldn't. Uh, shit will not be good for you. Okay? Don't even think about it. Make some serious damage to property. All right. Now that we know that the storm uh, has hit there, what I can tell you about some of the other parts of Florida, the storm has passed us by, but look at what's happening. You're still seeing these wind gusts. You're still seeing, because this is a very powerful storm, and you have the outer layers of the storm that are still very active here. Uh, we are in Crystal River. We are probably more than 50 miles away from uh, where the storm is hitting landfall, and yet there are still effects. We are seeing flooding. The water, we are now, we have now got, come up about three feet because the water has now come up uh, several feet from where we were standing moments ago. Uh, and so we are seeing some of that storm surge. It is the water that is going to cause the greatest problem likely with this storm, especially now that it is no longer a Category 4 storm. It is the storm surge. Please, for God's sakes, be safe. Try to get your pets, if you have stayed in touch, try to get your pets into a safe spot as well. Let us go now to Derek Van Dam. This is like that serious but not so actual serious talk you get about drinking alcohol as a minor. And he is in Tampa. The storm has passed by, but you'd never know it because where he is, it is inundated with water. That storm surge having a serious effect on Tampa. Yeah, you know, Sarah, with the national hurricane... I can't make up my mind about how serious this is until I see little Rhonda in those boots, okay? Kicking it up. Center just calling landfall on Keaton Beach. This is the strongest hurricane to impact the Big Bend region in over 125 years. And get this, folks, this is the third land. Dude, I don't know how the fuck you leave your pet behind. I'm not gonna lie. That shit is crazy to me, okay? Like. I, I don't know how that is possible. I don't know how that happens. Uh, I don't know how that could possibly happen. Like, how the fuck do you leave your pet behind? That's like a member of your family. You know what I mean? If you had a cat, you would stop playing, bro. Yeah, 100%. But that's why I don't have a cat. I'd be like, yo, that cat can deal with it on his own. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. My buddy wasn't allowed to bring it and his wife was pregnant. No, there is, I can't see a way. I do not see, I, I'm sorry. For me, I'm not even kidding. There is literally no difference between leaving your baby behind. Like, it, there, I just don't, like, I don't see a, a, a world 
I do not see a world where you're just like, okay, well, I'm just going to leave my child behind. You know what I mean? I'm going to leave my baby behind because I can't bring him. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm fucking lying. I'm lying. I'm just like, if a hotel's like, sorry, you can't bring your pets. I'm like, okay, I have no pet. Don't worry. Please do not look in the box. Please do not look at this comically sized box that's moving. That's fine. Okay. I was refused during two different hurricanes to enter a shelter because I had a dog. No, I'll die. I don't know. I just like, I don't see it. I, I don't. Did you have pets growing up? No. Um, I'm just, <laughs> do not pay attention to the barking box, sir. Do not pay attention to the barking box. It's not, have you seen Metal Gear Solid? Have you ever played a little game called Metal Gear Solid? Look at the box. What could be in there? Maybe it's Solid Snake. Have you ever thought about that? That could be really cool. Okay. That's not a dog. That's my wife. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I get why certain people would make that decision when push comes to shove. I'm simply stating that from where I'm standing, from where I'm standing, like, the way I, uh, the, the way I, I value uh, Kaya's life, there's just no fucking way. I, I, I would never, there's no way. In Oklahoma, there were sirens going off, and I had guinea pigs in a box, and they wouldn't let us in the door. Am I crazy for this? I mean, you guys do your own thing. If you if you care about your own life, you know, have fun. I don't. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe this is a very white trait of me or something, but, like, I straight up, I straight up value Kaya like a family member. And uh, in a situation like this, I would just, I would be like, all right, I'm tanking it. Like, I'll, I'll die, I guess. You know what I mean? Sorry. Okay. We're not going to the shelter then. Glad you said it and not me because I'd get banned. I mean, I think a lot of people forget, like, I, I had a wild, old, old, in the old days, back when I was still streaming at Twitch, like, when I first started streaming on Twitch, uh, I used to work at the Young Turks, and I lived in Brentwood, in an apartment, and there was a wildfire, uh, there was a wildfire, and I just brought fish with me everywhere I went that day, because I was like, nope, not happening, I don't give a shit, like, we had to, we had to evacuate, there was a wildfire scare, and I was like, yep, taking fish with me. No shot. Am I leaving my fucking dog behind in a wildfire? Absolutely not. Doesn't happen. People are allergic to dogs, so probably why they wouldn't let people with no dogs yet tank it. As my take. I don't think people are understanding. I'm saying. I'm saying. That like I value this dog. Like she is a part of my family. Like. You know what I mean? I'm allergic to your dumbass baby crying. Okay. You don't see me complaining. This is times of need. You know what I mean? It happens. <laughs> To be fair, though, you are talking to a person who thought he was deathly allergic to Kaya, if you remember. Like, deathly allergic. Like, I, was, I got eczema for the first time in my life. I went deaf in one ear. Luckily, these were all issues that happened to coincide, and it wasn't like deathly allergies. But... Immediately, the one thing I did, you sound like such a Redditor. I mean, that's a joke. The, the kid thing is a joke. I don't, I'm, I'm kidding. But um, the, the, uh, the first thing I did was just like, all right, I'm tanking it. Like, can you, the first thing I did was, 
<laughs> first thing I did was look up like, can you die from uh, uh, allergies to dogs? And also, how can you can you just live with the rest of your life having a dog, even if you are allergic to your dog? Didn't you get eczema in 2021 from all the stress? No, I didn't. I got a, uh, uh, what the fuck was it called? Uh, uh, hot uh, shingles. Sitting in my red dress, waiting at the bar I know that I am running out of favors, but can you pick me up? I could catch a bus, but I'd rather be in your car If someone has a service dog, ADA says allergies are not a valid excuse to not admitting them to a public place. There you go. <laughs> they don't let me in with my dog i'm calling a bomb threat ain't no one having shelter <laughs> what the fuck no this is for actual service dogs not for emotional support dogs. Yeah, but you don't understand. I don't have an emotional support dog. I have a family member. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> yep, my, uh. my dad was about to take Kai out and he was like, you know what? I'm going to wait until I eat because she bothers me while I'm eating, <laughs> which is true. She has become a bit of a botherer when you eat. That is the most C worded thing you've ever said. I am so unapologetically white when it comes to my love for my animal. Okay. This is like. Like, it's not even a question. Anyway, here's the full video of the destruction of the Horseshoe Beach, Florida camera moments ago. This camera was at least 10 feet above sea level. Waves were overtaking this camera during its final moments. That's a house, dude. Or like a shed, I guess. Well, it's done now. It's pool, pool now. That shed pavilion thing was a fucking trooper. I mean, it seems like it's tanking it right now. Dude, look at how gross that water is, dude. Holy shit. Storm surge is so nasty. It's just all poop, I feel like. It's all poop and, like, bacteria that uh, you haven't seen in a very long time. You know what I mean? Just, like, new, newly unearthed bacterias. God, Twitter fucking video is so ass cheeks. Why is it a white trait to love your animals? That seems kind of wack. You would say that race has nothing to do with love for one's animals and things. Okay, everybody stop fucking. Shut up. Shut up. It's a joke, okay? It's a fucking joke. It's a joke about how white people care more about, like, their own dogs or even other people's dogs than they do about, like, uh, other people, other humans, whole-ass human beings. Like, it's a common trope. It's a meme. It's a stereotype. It's a joke. Oh, my God. Ugh. People who get mad at, like, white people be like jokes are, are just like, oh, if I can't do racist jokes, then no one can make jokes in general. It's like the one type of joke that's, like, always allowed, okay? You can always make fun of Italians. You can always make fun of white people. And it's like every single time these people are fucking complaining, they're like, uh -huh, if I can't make, like, bottom-of-the-barrel black people jokes, then you are not allowed to make white people jokes. It's like, why? You just don't want any jokes to happen? Like, what is happening? Communism won. Yeah, the tides. 
The specter was haunting Florida. And it's not even a bad stereotype. Boo-hoo, y'all care too much? Yeah, I know. It's just, like, fucking annoying. Getting offended for not understanding a joke is the most 2023 thing ever. No, it used to be worse. I am a firm believer that... I am a firm believer that uh, getting mad at jokes that you don't understand used to be way worse back in the day. And then people would like actually unironically, uh, you know, pursue campaigns and shit. Okay. Like they would, they would do like mass harassment, mass targeting for not understanding a joke or whatever. And then uh, make it seem like they were uh, literally championing this like incredibly moral cause and uh, there was a lot more momentum for stuff like that. Nowadays, it still happens. Like, people still get mad on Twitter, but it just stays on Twitter. Nobody gives a shit anymore. You know? Um, okay, let's keep Landfalling going. Landfalling hurricane in Florida in 12 months. Wow. That's what the people who think you hate Starfield do? Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't matter. They're fucking gross losers. Who cares? Shut the fuck up. Irrelevant? What is this? Gas stoves, plastic bags, high-flow shower heads, functional gas cans, compact trucks and station wagons, plastic straws, smiling faces. Socialists in America are miserable people that destroy anything decent. People like out of jealousy, envy, and rage. So, um, one thing that uh, the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire failed to write in this uh, in this. Twitter post was um, the the uh, age of consent laws and the abolition of age of consent laws because they are pedophiles or at least pedophilia defenders. Famously, the uh, New Hampshire Libertarian Party account is run by a woman who is 100%, this is not a joke, this is not a meme, dating a convicted pedophile in prison, okay? And has actually defended uh, uh, pedophilia, so uh, that is a real thing. Uh, don't ever take these guys seriously, obviously. That's the real thing that they're upset about, not plastic bags or whatever. Okay. Oh, shit. Lost it. Let's Here's a look. Again, we do... And just walk with me and help paint this picture because the surge is still coming in from Tampa Bay. We checked one of the tidal gauges near where we're located it is currently at record levels, five and a half feet of storm surge near the tidal surge gauge that is closest. You got to mention on Politics Joe today, talking about how young rich people are the most Thatcherite and a UKU is needed. What's Politics Joe? I don't know what that is. To me. Uh, that is incredible. Records go back to 1991. So we're in record territory and... This is all working together, almost in a symphony of uh, cataclysmic events, right? We have not only a powerful major hurricane pushing up the water across the eastern sections of the Gulf of Mexico, a very shallow water basin, by the way, but we also have inland flooding that is moving from the, from it, from the ground towards the ocean. So these working together in conjunction, they meet in the middle, they rise up the water levels. That is also being combined with the impacts of a full moon, which is a super moon, and that has, has that great tidal swings with the highs and the lows. So even though we're nearing a low tide in Tampa Bay, we're still getting the surge and the impacts uh, from this storm that is 200 miles away from us. Just incredible. Sarah. It is incredible. I love what you just said there. That was very poetic a symphony of cataclysmic events super moon baby you already know werewolves are coming back dude cataclysmic events dude cataclysmic events god hates florida god hates the south i'm sorry not enough butt sex happening we already covered all of our bases yesterday if i was a pastor in florida right now i would be urging my congregation okay to engage in the divine act of male-on-male -male love. I would be urging people to open up their butts and, and, uh, and fuck one another in, an, in a 
you know, devastatingly uh, hedonistic orgy because it seems like a lot of places that are engaging in such libations uh, uh, seemingly, seemingly are not being impacted by God's anger. Open up your butts. It's time for the fuck pile. It's time for the top of the hour ad break. It is no accident that God has forsaken us on this beautiful, blessed day. Two hurricanes on a supermoon. No flood insurance. Libation means alcoholic drink. I know, it's the, it's the Christian way. Three-minute ad breaks coming around, all around. Fucker, you just had a tropical storm and a million wildfires? Look at that. We tanked it. God demands you to do gay sex. And he demands you. Hey, guys, and welcome back. What? TikTok sexy as Wattpad show? What the fuck? What is this? No. God demands you to subscribe at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. Divine intervention in the form of three minutes of ads coming for you unless you subscribe. For $5 or for free, or with a Twitch Prime, that one is free, or by getting gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. It's a good chat chat bit. Okay. South Carolina right now. What? No shot this is real. Bro, how are you driving in that and filming, by the way? Like, this person is literally driving and filming this. Anyway, this is from five minutes ago in Cedar Key, Florida. Peak storm surge battering structures at Cedar Key. We are glad the TC underwent an eye wall replacement cycle at the end, but the wind field expanded and produced a dangerous surge. Oh, there was a brief tornado in Goose Creek. Okay. I don't understand why people are uh, complaining about this. This is basically, like I said, indoor pool time. Not that bad. Not the worst thing. All of a sudden, you got an indoor pool. Have fun swimming with bull sharks, though. All I'm saying is you tank the pool. Okay, the indoor pool is kind of like this. In Turkey, we have a, a uh, old wives' tale that is similar to the story of Achilles, who is Turkish, for the record. As everybody knows. In uh, Arzurum, I think, you would take a baby, hold the baby up by their foot, and dump the baby in the incredibly icy river water. And if the baby survived, that baby was incredibly powerful. Okay? This is how you, you, uh, this is how you would, it's not like baptism, but I guess baptism is not, uh, is, is kind of similar to that. But um, it, there's like many different versions of this. There's uh, obviously like the Orthodox Christians in Russia that uh, also have a similar story. 
But you you dump the baby in the fucking river, okay? And the baby gets uh, protected because he, he can shelter. He can, If he can withstand the cold river as a baby, then he can survive, okay? Now, it's not... I don't think it's a real story. <laughs> but ultimately, my point is, it's kind of like that. The poop river inside of your house. You got to take a baby and dump the baby directly in the poop water. And if the baby stays alive after like a month, uh, that means the baby is going to be stronger than ever before. Okay? A Floridian baptism, if you will. What happens if the baby dies? Then it was an L baby. What do you mean? Fucking hold this L, baby. Like, you're bitch ass. You died. You're, you're, you ain't shit. You're weak. Because, like, think about it. As climate change makes extreme weather conditions more commonplace, it's not like a lot of the babies are going to survive anyway. This way, you're just, like, culling them before uh, they even, uh, I don't know, develop the capabilities of, like, writing stupid shit on Twitter. So I'm on board with it. That's what you got to do. about to be dead. How long do I leave my baby in? Mine's just floating right now. Yeah, that one might be a that that one might have been a broken baby. See a lot of the debris as well. And it just seems to continue to rise. Just big westerlies here coming off of Peter Key. Big time flow up. Uh turn the baby on and off again. And if the problems persist, you might have to you might have to pop it back in the oven, you know. Put the baby back inside yourself. Oh yeah, put it in the rice. Fuck, I forgot. Turn turn the baby on and off again. Put the baby in rice. After twenty four hours, if the baby is still not working, then you know you just you just got to put it back in. If the baby floats, it's rotten. Shake the baby a little bit. Random Azan straight compliment. If you got rid of all the buildings in the, in the square area of Los Angeles, you could take every human being on Earth, put them shoulder to shoulder, and they would fit inside the, the city limits of Los Angeles. Anybody? Kaya, come here. Kaya. Everyone says they don't believe that. Well, let me tell you this right now. Shoulder to shoulder standing up. Average uh, shoulder width of everybody would be about, what, three feet? Put three people together, a foot wide. That's three by three. So three people would be uh, nine square feet. So nine billion square feet times, and there's what, eight billion people. So whatever. What's the square footage of Los Angeles County? What? You could put half of them in Hassan's house. What? <laughs> True. I do have the biggest house uh, in in uh, the entire United States of America, really. Random Austin Ivy tips. Put the baby in the microwave. Prefer for climate change. Put your baby in shit river to give curse of Achilles. That's not a curse, man. What are you talking about? What do you mean a curse of Achilles? That's just a strong-ass baby. It's a curse if your baby doesn't survive. It's not a curse if your baby does survive. The entire point is the baby is supposed to survive. Okay? Understand this. Achilles is dead, so he clearly wasn't blessed. Brother, what do you mean? He tanked so much damage all around. It's just that he got hit in the fucking heel. That's why he died. Fans all coming 
fuck into you mean? Florida, we should mention once again that Hurricane Idalia has made landfall in the Big Bend region of the west coast of Florida. It has made landfall. It is hitting. That means the eye is going to be uh, coming onto shore. And then those winds that whip around the other side of the eye, which can be even more devastating than the initial winds, that is happening right now. You are looking some of live pictures. Um, and, and we want to show you some satellite imagery too. That'll all be coming up. We're going to visit with someone who is writing out this storm, this very dangerous storm, in just a few moments. This is the way the baby grows but up the and area survives. Of major concern, even as this. Yeah, literally, dude. Charlie is Charlie is a is a perfect example of a baby that uh, survived the famous uh, Florida baptism. Doesn't Florida always look like this? I thought they had to keep the waters high so their personal transport gators were comfortable in it. Yeah. He should go back to the Hoobastank Fauxhawk. I normally would make fun of the Fauxhawk, but he's kind of rocking it here. Like, I think he looks good, even with the Fauxhawk. Can't wait to see Charlie's twink death. Oh, come on, dude. This hurricane moves inland toward Georgia. Still as a hurricane, the major areas of concern are along the Florida Gulf Coast from Tampa all the way up through the Big Bend where they are experiencing historic and devastating storm surge. I want to go right to Bill Weir in Steenhatchee in Florida. You know, not is about an hour and a half from where I am right now driving, but it's a world away in terms of the level of devastation. Bill, just describe what you're seeing. Well, John, uh, the good news is it seems like the surge has crested here in Steenhatchee. You can see this uh, line of debris. There's some boxes and logs here. It has been receding ever since, uh, but the devastation it is leaving behind is obvious. This is the dockside grill here. Uh, the Steenhatchee River rushed its banks. We knew that was going to happen. It normally runs from east to west. Uh, we're looking south right now. The force of the dirty side of this storm has been forcing so much water upstream against the current here. And the victims of that are all these fishing community villages, uh, condos, communities. There's not a whole lot of development around the corner this way. Most of the town is behind us on higher ground. So that's good news. But where you were yesterday, John, the Sea Hag Marina, all of that we fear might have been wiped out as, as it's sort of the first bend in the river coming off of the Gulf of Mexico. So all the people who lost their homes and business, are they fucked or do they have insurance? Uh, no, so I don't know for each individual person there, but I do know that Florida no longer has uh, uh, homeowners insurance. Uh, so I don't know if they have it or not. Some of them might be lucky enough to have it, but a lot of them don't. I'm calling out love, calling out love. I need somebody, somebody who can show me love You know somebody, somebody who can show me love Hey, please don't let me down this time I need somebody, somebody who can show me love Somebody who can show me love The family, the couple who owns this marina you can see their mood, you know, shift from hopeful early in the morning to, to more resigned as the, the destruction becomes obvious here. But we're also starting to see people drive around, which is probably not the wisest move right now. There's still gusts that are kicking up, not as bad as we saw a few hours ago. Uh, but you can understand people's instinct to want to check out the damage, see what survived, what didn't. Too soon for that, to say the least. John? All right, uh, Bill Weir, and again, at the top, but just to be clear, you said for now at least the, stir the surge seems to be going the, the other direction. I know the tide could still come in more, but for now, uh, the worst seems to have passed? Yes, you can see that it's a very clear line where the, where the, the high water mark left its debris there, and it has been receding now fairly steadily. I live in Florida, just got notified my homeowner's insurance is going up 40% next year. I, hey, dude, it's, <laughs> at least you have it. 
I thought that like most of the insurance providers in the state of Florida had completely uh, been gutted. Like chapter 11 bankruptcies left and right. Uh, and that they were actually setting up secondary insurances for the insurance companies. And even those guys were having a hard time. Because, uh, you know, it's just inevitability that your house is going to get fucking flooded if you live in Florida, especially in certain areas, and that it makes no sense to insure them. California and Florida both have mass exodus, but some companies will stay in jack-up premiums. Yeah, Same, similar problems happening in California as well, especially for wildfire insurance. Another company avoids risky Florida home insurance policies. Here's what caused the crisis. AAA uh, said only a small number of policyholders will be affected. The move shows continued market volatility has prompted several insurers to shutter or leave the state. Insuring insurance is called reinsurance, and yes, it is a big industry. Insurance industry guy here. The federal government is forcing non-Florida insurance companies to enter into funding pools to insure Florida because no one wants to insure it themselves anymore. Damn. Uh, that's kind of fucked up. Federal government and any state much. Uh, I thought the private market should be able to be, uh, the, the free market should be able to cover these uh, issues. What's going on there? What's happening? I entered a Savannah, Georgia zip code and Geico insurance and they wanted me to call in. Hi, Mr. Pecker. We are sorry. Online quotes in your area are not available. Please call us. You, you son of a bitch, Mr. Pecker. I'm a data engineer for a withheld insurance company, and we are actively refusing any and all business in Florida. Yeah. Do you think there should be a state-provided insurance? I think there should be state-provided housing and not in the areas that uh, it currently is in, in the state of Florida or everywhere in general, but I don't think it's going to happen, especially in Florida, because Florida is like a libertarian paradise. Not like actuaries know how to price climate change exposure at all. I think they do know how to do that. Which is why they're no longer insuring in Florida. A lot of uh, insurance is, is uh, pulling out of the state of Florida. Listen, at the end of the day, these guys... Uh, uh, actuaries, no, you can't, like, you can say climate change is fake or whatever the fuck. You can say whatever you want about climate change, but the people that are crunching numbers are still going to factor climate change in to their numbers crunching. It's not happening as an accident. You know what I mean? Their, their whole job is to make sure that they are still profitable. About as fast as it came up. At what point it'll level off, we don't know, but the wind is still holding this water here. You know the... Okay, I, I have to explain something here for a lot of you guys, by the way. A similar thing could happen in any privatized insurance uh, field. If the pool of the insured is too high risk, meaning that... Every single person that is dumping in uh, to the larger pile of money on a monthly basis with their premiums end up having to take money out, then all of a sudden insurance doesn't work. A private insurance company in that situation will say, we're done, we're bankrupt, it's over. There's not much we can do. It's pretty simple, right? A similar example I usually use is the, uh, is, is the VA. Right? The VA <clears throat> relies on government funds. It's the closest we have to socialized medicine. However, the VA has a pool of people 
that are all sick. Like pretty much every single person that even goes through basic training is going to need some level of medical attention. If not all of them are going to need psychiatric evaluations and help in general. Okay? So because that pool that is uh, under the coverage of Veterans Affairs, because that pool is all in desperate, dire need of uh, health care, there is no not sick people to leverage against. Okay? So that is precisely the reason why you always have to put more and more money into it and and uh, it becomes basically a, a gigantic money sink. The way to solve that, uh, the insurance problem in general, the way to solve it is to make sure that there is only one national insurance provider. You know, you pay in to the national insurance provider in the form of monthly premiums, if you want to call it that. Okay, I receive VA healthcare. It's six months to get an MRI and all the doctors have left to go private. It's rough right now. Yeah. The VA, much like socialized medicine all around the world, also runs into uh, a separate problem uh, in the form of, of uh, obviously underfunding beyond what I was talking about with respect to like every single person that enters the VA pool is in dire need of medical care, unlike uh, normal insurance. Okay. Normal insurance, how does normal insurance work? You have a pool of healthy people. You have a pool of young people, for example. You have people like myself that are paying into insurance without ever getting anything back from insurance, right? Because our costs, our medical costs, even with uh, how inflated uh, American healthcare is, is marginal in comparison to an older person or someone who has cancer or someone who uh, gets into a car crash or something. Okay, I'm young, relatively, and pretty healthy, and I pay hundreds of dollars in premiums, and I rarely ever get back anything in return from my insurance. People like myself and people like yourselves in the chat who don't have any kind of like serious chronic injury or uh, 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 medical uh, conditions are what keep the insurance pool alive. So I say... Why don't we just do that at the national uh, level? Make sure that there is a large pool uh, of every single person unconditionally paying into it, okay? And you can price adjust it to how much money they have, how much money they make, okay? And even fucking cap it at a certain point, right? Have a, have a bottom and have a ceiling if you want to put that out there as well, right? And then all the healthy people are uh, pooling their funds together, they're not taking anything out of it because they're healthy. And then the unhealthy, those who need it, are leveraged adequately inside of that structure. I'm just saying that could probably be a better way to deal with insurance in general. Those pools only work if the population continues to grow, make babies, you degens. I mean, it's still, it still works. Yes, you do need uh, you know a younger uh, you need a, a, a younger uh, uh, labor force to make it work. Well, the United States of America has been able to avoid some of those uh, problems that other countries are facing. It's not just having babies, it's also immigration. America has been able to uh, not receive some of the worst aspects of, of uh, being a uh, modernized, heavily developed society by having a steady inflow of immigration, both illegal and legal. Or hear me out, we don't fund it like an insurance scheme. Chatter, what I'm describing is quite literally just a national healthcare structure. That's, I don't think you understood what I was saying. Uh, that was the joke. The joke is that if you were to nationalize and have a singular healthcare pool, okay, that would be the best thing to do. And then also, all of the hospitals that you build uh, would also be government funded, which they currently are anyway. Most hospitals receive a tremendous amount of government funding, obviously, uh, to exist. 
Uh, this way you would eradicate some of the worst aspects of uh, not having any hospitals in rural areas, for example. Hospitals are basically, one, subsidize out the fucking ass, which it should be. And then two, if they're uh, on top of the subsidies, they are uh, usually getting voluntary donations from wealthy uh, benefactors that, you know, put their name on the side of the hospital or whatever. They're not like uh, entirely profitable businesses in and of itself. I mean, obviously, like elective surgeries are good uh, for for uh, generating uh, revenue, but overall, it is not a system that is designed to be super profitable. Part of the reason why medical costs are so incredibly high in the United States of America is because a lot of people don't have money to pay for the insanely high fees. A lot of people do not have, uh, a lot of the insurance uh, providers are also working uh, overtime, ensuring that they are not uh, paying uh, enough of the cost. And that mediator itself, that mediator existing in and of itself actually ends up inflating the price in the hospital. And most of the burden is left upon those who actually do pay uh, their both both their insurance and also uh, the rest of their bills. That's why your hospital bills are so fucking expensive. There are a lot of redundancies in this process that could absolutely be eliminated. You can talk about it like a fucking Bain Capital guy if you want to and describe it on those terms because the hospital structure in and of itself and the, the medical system in the United States of America is not exactly efficient from a capitalist perspective either. It's just not. Obviously, there's issues in every step, uh, in every direction. But you sidestep the original question that started this convo. What does the government do for people living in flood areas now? Build a house for them and displace them? It seems impossible to solve now. I don't think so. I didn't sidestep that at all. It's just called a risk pool, right? Doesn't specifically have to relate to insurance. Conservatives always say they don't want to pay for other people's health care, but they already are. Yeah. Um, health Justice Now is a great book. Check and check out on this subject. Yeah. And when people don't get preventative care, emergency care costs more. I think if the government also was... Uh, here's, another, here's another aspect of this. If the government was also responsible for funding your health care across the board, like directly and not just simply offering subsidies to these insurance providers, uh, these pharmaceutical companies, these hospitals in general, and like creating a patchwork solution that is just funneling money into the private sector and into the pockets of whatever shareholders are, are invested in these uh, aspects of the medical industry. Um, if that was the case, then they would have a vested interest in your health. They would have to ensure that you are healthier than you actually are currently. For that reason, they would probably implement things that most Americans would consider draconian, as a matter of fact. One thing that I was talking to with my uh, uh, French friends was uh, in France, apparently free refills for sodas are illegal. Um, why are they illegal? Or not illegal, but like you just have to pay for it. They're not allowed. Why are they not allowed? Well, because, you know, they don't want you to get fat because the government's paying for your health care. Now, of course, if you were to ask that question to Americans, I feel like more Americans would rather have free refills on their sodies and then, you know, tank it and fucking die. If they, are more, if they were more liable on people's health, then they would want to make sure the food regulations and shit are up to par as well as safety standards and regulations. Yes. The government will use eminent domain in Staten Island after Sandy. Homes were bought up by the city by the block, and many were raised to create a seawall after Hurricane Sandy. These people who lived there got fair market value for their homes and moved on with their lives. Renters probably got fucked, though. Yeah. It's worth noting that less than 10% of your hospital bills are used to pay the doctors and actual medical workers. The other 90% is for insurance companies, CEOs, and hospital administrators that provide absolutely no value and don't contribute to your health care at all. Really? 
read Stocky's comment? What did he say? Free refills are a constitutional right as long as we keep subsidizing corn. It's like how citizens of Gulf nations get free gas. I agree. What did he say? I made money on generator stocks ahead of the hurricane and now Home Depot for the cleanup. Nice. Ironically, Florida has state-created home insurance of last resort, a public option, if you will, and that public insurance company is going insolvent because of all the private insurers are dumping their high-risk policies to them. Yes, the problem is in the United States of America, whenever there is a government initiative, that government initiative doesn't end up serving the interests of the population, but instead it becomes yet another patchwork solution for private profiteers to dump their fucking volatile, shitty, uh, uh, shitty products into. Okay, it is almost always still subsidizing private corporations. It is almost still subsidizing, uh, uh, at some level, helping, uh, uh, helping protect shareholder value. Why the state should support and bail those pieces of shit, Big Pharma? They won't move a finger to help people at all. What do you mean? Banning soda refills is fucking meaningless if road sodas are already outlawed, Sag. I know. Nobody's talking about the, the constitutional right to drink and drive. It's kind of fucked up. That's what I would run on if I were to ever run on. Uh, if I were to run for uh, political office, that's what I would run on. All right, the wind is holding the water there. Uh, I am very sorry to hear about the family that owns the Sea Hag, that marina, uh, that the marina may be gone, although um, it is heartening to know that they themselves are okay, and that's what's truly important. Bill, every once in a while here, we do get this really just pounding rain. What are you getting in terms of rain there? We're getting these bands now. We, the, we saw the 80, 90 mile an hour gusts for a few minutes, a few hours ago. Now it's probably in the 30 mile an hour range. Uh, still dangerous. We're taking shelter behind one of these grand trees that are here. Uh, but we've seen plenty of this, you know, corrugated steel sheeting, tin roofs blowing around, uh, peeling off here. But again, just to sort of level what the locals were telling us, last night we went out on a just short boat cruise in the calm before the storm with a local captain here who said he was worried that the surge would reach the roof line of the dockside grill right there. You can see it, it came up a few feet in, inside, but nowhere near their worst fears. That gives you some perspective that it probably could have been a lot worse in this area, but as, as far as what's happening further up, Keaton Beach, all of that, we don't know yet. It's too soon to tell. Is it necessary to put those guys outside or is it just for the fun of it? Uh, it's, it's a bit of both. I have knees. Thank you for the five tier one. Give the subs. Um, I think it's, it's, it's definitely not necessary, but also it's very cool that they do that. It's like a tradition at this point. And I, I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. Like you, you just get a better feel for the devastation, right? That's right. We don't have eyes on some of these other areas where the storm surge could be even worse. Bill Weir, thank you so much uh, for that perspective. Please stay safe and please keep us posted over the next several hours as well. If any, Wait, what? It's so stupid uh, and dangerous? Yeah, okay. Well, it's fucking boring if they're doing it from inside of the studio, okay? I mean, come on. Floridians could see major hurricane hikes after Idalia. Governor DeSantis on insurance from July 12th. So knock on wood, we won't have a big storm this summer. Then I think you're going to start to see companies see an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, he knocked on wood all right. Um Bill describing what he is seeing in Steenhatchee there, a town of 500 to 1,000 people, depending on the time of the year, what they are going through. The dynamic with private insurers dumping people off onto Florida state insurance is the exact problem with public option instead of universal coverage for health care. It's exactly what private insurers will do. It will explode the cost of the public option and private insurers will massively profit while they point and scream, see how expensive we can't possibly afford universal health care. Yeah. Um, 
That is what they have done with the VA as well. I mean, it's just every aspect of the American medical field is just completely inflated, completely fucked. Um, it doesn't make sense from a capitalist perspective either, unless you're just like pure grit, pure profit driven. And you think like, no, some people got to make money in this field. Uh, like even from, even from the perspective of like, you know, uh, micro macroeconomics 101 like principles of, of microeconomics principles of macroeconomics like it's it's there's inelastic demand in the uh, healthcare uh, field therefore they can do whatever the fuck they want with it they can get away with uh you know raising prices they can get away with any kind of cost cutting measures for the most part uh if there was no government intervention whatsoever it would be even worse and with the marginal government intervention that we have uh, oftentimes on top of the advantageous position that they're in, they end up uh, taking advantage of all matter of regulations to eliminate the rest of the competition in the marketplace. They take advantage of any kind of like government intervention in the form of subsidies to uh, increase their profits. Uh, it's just, it's immoral. It's absolutely awful. I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's so selfish. It's so bad. It's so parasitic. But I don't think we will uh, make a significant change in this uh, in this area ever. It doesn't seem like it, at least. Sorry. Sorry to be pessimistic, but. Uh, which is quite bad in, and still developing right now. Let's go now down to Tampa. Obviously, one of the major metropolitan centers of the state of Florida, where while the storm did not make a direct hit there, not at all, the storm surge there has been a serious issue. Derek Van Dam is. And when you talk about, like, doctors striking, in the UK, for example, you have to remember something. The Tory government has implemented 10 plus years of austerity with the express purpose of privatizing certain sectors of the national healthcare system. They can't immediately eradicate it, so they have to cripple it, starve the beast, if you will, until people lose confidence in the system. Okay, that's it. That's how it works. Doctors are 100% expendable in the USA. And eh, not necessarily. I would say as far as like uh, doctors goes, America is one of the few areas where America is a, is a country where doctors are like gods. They get paid a lot. There's still certain issues, but let's be real. Nurses are expendable. Doctors, not so much. USA still remains on top of on top in terms of medical innovations, especially within niches. That is not true. This is completely objectively false. If you look at novel chemical compound uh, developments, if you look at innovation in novel chemical compounds. The United States is not the leader in novel chemical compounds innovations per capita. Not. I think it barely cracks the top 10. The United States obviously has more doctors, more money, more people in general. So if you're looking at it from a totality number, yes, the United States leads, but they are not efficient in any way. Just we're big. We have a lot of people, we have a lot of money, we have a lot of brain drain. So on that front, yes, we are number one in totality, but in, uh, in per capita numbers, we are nowhere near number one. But you can't do per capita for everything. Why? What do you mean? Yes, you can. Why would I look at a totality? What, what do you mean? Y you should. Not only can I do that, but I will do that, and you should do that as well. There's a reason why that exists. My man said, sorry, I don't want you to scale it so I can keep believing that we're number one. The beginning of Medicare is an interesting case study on in how the dynamic plays out IRL. Insurers used to dump both the sick and old off their rolls. Fango Lives is correct. 
Medicare also has a higher satisfaction than private insurance and runs lower overhead by a ton, even with Republicans trying to bloat it and make it bad, even though the sick pool, even though the pool of like high risk uh, insurers, like high risk, high risk insurance havers inside of Medicare is constantly growing and it's all old people that desperately need it. It's still a better structure overall. Anyway. And even then, we have had issues with Medicare. Until recently, it was illegal for Medicare to negotiate pharmaceutical uh, prices. The only developed nation on the planet where that is the case. That the government has made itself, has handicapped itself, and has refused to be able to, uh, to bargain when making big purchases uh, on pharmaceuticals. Uh, VA was the first to crack that egg under Barack Obama, on, and that only happened in his second term on his way out. And now it has only taken, what, three fucking terms since then to finally, or two terms since then to finally actually allow certain pharmaceuticals to be uh, collectively bargained at, uh, at purchase or Medicare and Medicaid, specifically Medicare. Ah, it's fucking nuts, dude. It's just so, it's so transparently evil. Anyway, let's keep going. Is there, Derek, what are you seeing? Yeah, and the wind continues to push up the water from the Tampa Bay as well, John. We are getting now these intermittent tropical feeder bands, and what was completely visible uh, across Tampa Bay just moments ago has now been obscured by these heavy sheets of rain coming in. Uh, it is raining at quite a clip, probably a good half an inch to an inch per hour. This will cause localized inland flooding. and. What's happening and this, this is all working together to create the very difficult storm surge conditions that you see uh, unfolding behind us on Bayshore Boulevard. Now this area floods, yes, during rainy days, it happens, but now this is in conjunction with the surge of water that has been pushed up with this major hurricane, the inland flooding meeting it at the same time, and then also the exaggerated tides from the supermoon and the full moon that's happening as we speak. Now, we just went through the low tide cycle. That was at 7.56 this morning. Now we're working our way back up into high tide. So the concern here is that the surge that already broke record levels. Per capita is used to scale measurements for comparison. When you compare Qatar to America, for example, if Qatar has small GDP versus America, that makes sense because America has a huge country compared to Qatar. But if Qatar has a higher GDP per capita compared to America... That is because Qatar has more economic output when scaled compared to America when scaled. Thank you for describing that facial creamy. It's one of those gusts of wind that come through. We're concerned that the surge later this afternoon, roughly 2 p.m., are going to be exacerbated by all of these these uh, kind of a, a, a company of of, uh, of of issues here. The the, the super moon. The storm surge, the, the, the push of the water from the storm, and that's going to work together to create even further storm surge flooding uh, concerns here along the Tampa Bay region. Tampa, you can't see it, but it is over my right shoulder. We've been here all day, and the, the bay has just been angry. The water pushing up, creating waves, sometimes towering over two, three stories at times. And, uh, you know, as these bands come in, they are literally stinging our face here. There have been spectators from these houses that have come to just see the scene unfolding. And, you know, this is different for them because they know that this road can flood. But with this amount of water lapping up to the property lines, they know that their homes are at risk as well. John, so much going on here. I'm going to send it back to you. Yeah, Derek, if I can uh, hang, you, hang on to you for a second longer, and people out driving, they probably shouldn't be in this town. Um, yes. The rain is coming down here now really hard, and I, and I can tell it's coming down hard where you are, too, and you're describing this two-pronged concern of the storm surge in some areas and then the fresh water flooding from inland to out. But if I can ask you, lean on to your meteorological expertise for a second about the storm surge. We were just speaking to Bill Weir a moment ago in Steenhatchee, who said at least there, 
it seems like the surge, surge for now may have crested. They're seeing it, it back off a little bit, and they're seeing a debris line there. Talk to us about how this could work over the next several hours up and down the Big Bend area, even where you are. Could you see the surge recede some and then come back in again? I have a silly question. Why do they get the reporters to stay in the storm? Seems kind of psychotic to make them go to the perils of the storm. Content, baby. Content. Content. That's what it is. Like, what do you mean? That's what it is. They're having a little bit of fun with it, you know? It's fucking, it's, it's sick. Okay, so th that's a great question. And what we got to do is we got to visualize how a hurricane rotates counterclockwise, okay? And so I am on the eastern side of where that center of where Adalia made landfall. Where Bill Weir is located, he's likely, I haven't checked a map, but I believe he would be on the back side of the... All meteorologists that I know have wet dreams about standing in these conditions. They literally are experts in this. I'm pretty sure they know how dangerous it is. Thanks for your incredible insight, though. Yeah, I mean, chatters yesterday when I was describing uh, how, uh, like, the storm hunters work, like how the Air Force sends a plane directly into the fucking eye of the hurricane, were basically saying the exact same thing. They were like, what? Like, we're, we're fucking flying a plane into it? Like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, these are things that we must do. This is, you know, this is a thing that you got to do. These guys mostly are doing it, not for scientific reasons, obviously, but for mostly for content, but they kind of like it, you know? They probably do. I don't think they're, like, forced into this situation. The storm. So the wind direction will be completely opposite to what we're receiving here. And that's important. Let's compare it to Ian from September of last year. There is a major difference to what happened in Tampa Bay that had the water literally sucked out because of the direction of the wind was pushing offshore. And yeah, these guys also, like, they don't... They don't dump them into the middle of the fucking surge. Like, they don't put them in an area where they're, like, clearly impacted. If the water had more poo in it, they would probably be less happy about it. I mean, I'm pretty sure the water has plenty of poo in it. But, you know, they, like, they're not doing Reed Timmer shit, right? Like, that would be a little bit more risky. Here in Tampa versus the onshore component that brought the surge to Fort Myers Beach. Same thing is happening here. We happen to be in the onshore component of this storm, and that is why we back. continue to see this push, this surge of water that is coming directly off the Gulf of Mexico. John. Yeah, it's a really good explanation, Derek, and if you can, and I can't see you, so I don't know if you're just getting poured on or blown around now or what. So if you need to go, let me know, but I'm going to hang on to you as All long as I above. can because this is such important information. If this is such important information that we're both going to get wet for the time being. Um, in terms of the tides, you were talking about the supermoon and the tide rising. How does tide work with storm surge? Storm surge is independent of high tide, but the tides can make it worse? Yeah, this is just incredible to, to think the unfortunate coincidence of this timing, right? We have high tide in Tampa Bay occurring about 2 p.m. this afternoon. We also have this super moon. Let me explain what that is. Super moon is actually when the full moon is at its closest approach to Earth. It's roughly about 18,000 miles closer than it normally would be on its elliptical path around the planet. So what that does is it exaggerates the tug, the pull on the ocean. Will they talk about how it makes you gay? Just saying, 75% water, moon controls the water, tide goes in, tide goes out, can't explain it, just saying, super moon, known to make people more gay. And it exaggerates the low tides, but it also exaggerates the high tides, and now that we have what is a hurricane that has pushed up all of this water in combination with this high tide and the supermoon. We have the potential here for more surge in the locations that have that onshore component, like I was explaining to you a moment ago.
Our breaking news coverage of Hurricane Adalia continues. The storm is now moving quickly across southern Georgia as a Category 1. And Adalia is so massive, we're talking 250 miles of the southeast right now being hit all at once. The city of Savannah now bracing three to five feet of storm surge expected there. And officials are warning conditions are going to rapidly... I mean, I'm happy that, like, as the day goes on, they went from it's going to be Cat 4 with, like, 12-foot storm surges to, like, in Savannah, it's Cat 1, and it's going to be 3- to 5-foot storm surge, which is still pretty devastating, but it's not as devastating and as deadly, I guess. So that's good. I wonder if... I wonder if, like... uh. Like the, uh, the the climate change uh, deniers are going to be like, oh, yeah, they fucking claimed that this was going to be awful. Like, look at them again. Like, classic meteorologists, like, doing doing wrong by the people. You know what I mean? Like, they're lying again. They're trying to freak us out. It's not that bad. You know what I mean? Deteriorate very soon. Right now, search and rescue operations are underway as the catastrophic storm surge on Florida's Gulf Coast is actually still rising. 12 feet were for coastal Florida, not for Georgia. Yeah, but still. Some areas. The Big Bend region, that curve in, in Florida's corner there, seeing the worst impact after the storm made landfall as a Category 3. And we're getting some stunning new video from Keaton Beach. It's showing the moments as the eye of the storm hit. And this is some of the stunning aftermath. A home completely destroyed, the walls and the roof ripped off. You can see a bed inside of the house. Florida officials say two people were killed in two separate car accidents. I would have been nutting right there, dude. <laughs> this is happening to me. I'm in that I'm on that bed nutting. One last nut. During severe storm conditions as well. And in Perry, Florida, as the storm hit winds topped 120 miles per hour. This woman caught the moment a tree fell right on her home. Have a listen. Oh my gosh. No! Oh. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh my gosh. No! They're replaying it over and over again? That's crazy. Luckily, they're fine. Who the fuck mounted that TV? I don't know, but shit stayed. It withstood the goddamn uh, storm. So it's kind of wild, kind of crazy. Um, you guys probably heard, if you were uh, listening to the Fear End podcast or the Sad Boys podcast that I was on, Jarvis Johnson talk about how uh, he's from Florida. He's a, he's a Gainesville Gator boy. And... Uh, and how uh, they were really poor, and a tree fell on their house when he was young in Florida, and they just had to, like, shut off that part of their house, and they just couldn't use it anymore. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that could be genuinely oh dangerous. Right now, we have reporters covering all angles. Uh, let's begin in Gulfport with Carlos Suarez. Carlos, uh, tell us what you're seeing there in the wake of this. Anyway, am I crazy or is this storm uh, storm chasing kind of mid? For more on what? Like, I feel like there's not to too much going from on. Hurricane Adalia. We're joined now by the director of the National Hurricane Center. I'm gonna move on from That's this. Michael Brennan. Good morning to you, Michael. Listen, we've seen the pictures. Good morning. We've seen the pictures. It After looks this. as bad as they said it was going to be, being described as a once in a lifetime event for some parts of Florida. So, can you tell us what makes this one? Thankfully, by the way, like mid content, but thankfully mid content. Different than all the rest. Well, in this part of Florida, in particular, the Big Bend Coast, we haven't seen a hurricane landfall of this intensity in many, many years, even going all the way back through our historical data. This area is especially sensitive to that storm surge here with the shallow continental shelf and all the water being pushed on shore around the, the circulation of the powerful hurricane is leading to that catastrophic storm surge that's taking place here in the Big Bend region right now concerns you right now as, as you're talking to us and it's moving in 
It is, yeah, and, and, and we're going to see, you know, not just the storm surge, but potential for, you know, damaging winds extending well inland all the way across portions of North Florida into southern Georgia, into places like Savannah, uh, Hilton Head. We have hurricane warnings in effect with a fast-moving hurricane. It's going to bring those winds really far inland today and tonight. And what can you say to convince Michael? We already hear it, people saying, I'm not leaving. I've been through this before. Um, yeah. You know, I want to ride this out. What can you possibly say to people to stress to them how important it is to follow instructions? Well, most of people that die in hurricanes die from water, either from the combination of storm surge or freshwater flooding due to rainfall. And those are things you can leave and get out of the way of in terms of the danger. So it's too late here along the Big Bend coast of Florida. People need to already be gone. That storm surge is happening now. But farther east, places like Savannah, Charleston, Hurricanes always rapidly weaken over land. Coastal areas are the only areas that ever receive the power of a high cast storm. However, how far it travels on land and stays above tropical storm status is worth paying attention to. Yeah. There's a storm surge warning in effect there for impacts that are going to occur later today and tonight. If you're asked to evacuate by your local officials, you want to get out of harm's way. You don't have to go too far, maybe just tens of miles to get inland away from that storm surge uh, threat. Is there anything people can do at this point to, to stay safe? Well, in the Big Bend region, you know, with landfall imminent, if you're out of the storm surge evacuation zone, you almost want to treat it like a tornado. You want to be in a safe place in an interior room in your home as those destructive winds move inland. Uh, certainly everywhere else in this hurricane warning area, you're going to want to stay indoors today, stay away from windows, you know, hopefully, and, and, and you're not going to want to be out and about anywhere in this region during the day today. So you want to find your safe place and stay there. All right, Michael Brennan, we thank you for your time. Hope people are listening to you today. Thanks. Thanks. For the first time, the federal government is prepared to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies over the price of some very popular... Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. Uh, Biden administration has announced 10 drugs targeted for Medicare price negotiation. Let's take a look. For their drugs under Medicare. This is part of President Biden's plan to lower prescription drug costs, part of the Inflation Reduction Act passed by Congress last year. Weijia Zhang joins us now from the White House with more on this. Weijia, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Good morning to everybody. You're right. This fall, the agency that runs Medicare will start haggling to get a better price for 10 widely used medications. But critics, including lobbying groups and Republicans, are fighting the negotiations. There are at least eight lawsuits aiming to block them. Catherine Bristol's diabetes medication costs up to $200 a month. She says sometimes that means she can't afford to buy groceries. I shouldn't have to choose between my medicine to keep me not going blind, not eating or dipping into my rent. Bristol takes Genuvia one of 10 drugs that could be cheaper after negotiations between the government and drug manufacturers. They're used to treat a range of illnesses, including